Hi everyone, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for the Degree Information Day, and also a sharing and a presentation of the BA Honours Fine Art Program that is newly offered by NAFA and validated by the University of Arts London. So we're really excited to run through the various components of the program. What are some expectations, what the fine art environment is like, and maybe how you can prepare your portfolio and think about applying for this course. And of course, as Ruth said earlier, if you do have questions, please ask us and we'll try our best to answer them as much as possible. All right. So a bit about our fine art program. Uh, we are NAFA's flagship. When NAFA commenced in 1938, uh, the fine art uh, program had 14 fine art students uh, and it started off in the shop house at Geylang. And over the years, we've produced many artists who have made valuable contributions to the arts industry and the art ecosystem. And the world today is really evolving. And for us at the Fine Art Programme, we really, really question, um, what does it mean to be an artist today? How has this role evolved? How can we uh, maintain this sort of symbiotic relationship with the ecosystem in conjunction with other art practitioners in the scene? And so that's how we envision this new degree programme to be, in a way to help us uh, sustain practices to to bring forth young artists with the agency to create and shift the arts and cultural landscape in Singapore. So we have five pillars here that are five key areas that really uh, shape the fine art experience. Um, we really work closely in terms of the studio philosophy. Um, for us, we introduce a broad practice which covers 2D, 3D, 4D practices and as well as design practices, because we acknowledge there is a diverse uh, way and approach towards how artists make art today. Uh, so this will prepare students and graduates to also become holistic practitioners to take on diverse projects and roles. Uh, much of what we do here is very much centered on student development. So you won't just work with your peers collaboratively from different environments and backgrounds, but we really, um, if you see here, the idea of a course, uh, we co-plan a study plan with you. Uh, with students, we acknowledge that, you know, at the end of the day, you might want to be an artist, educator, artist, curator, or even artist, and something else that's not really in the scene at this point. So for us, we want to identify your strengths, your artistic aspirations to work towards a kind of professional practice that is sustainable for you. Our curriculum is uh, practice-led and it's industry-focused, which means we leverage both contemporary practice and traditional um, sort of expressions and mediums, while at the same time, we nurture your creative attitudes towards, again, sustaining and contributing to the art scene. Our faculty is a dedicated team of experts uh, from the field uh, in Singapore and the region, and we sincerely want to groom our students to be competent leaders and practitioners in their field. So if you look at our fine art course, there are uh, four points that frame the spirit of this new degree program, which is really informing the ethos of the course, which is thinking, making and happening. So if you see here, the proposed BA Honours Fine Art course really hopes to uh, groom students to lead local and regional art scenes as a holistic, reflective and engaged art practitioner. It's important that we don't work in silos anymore, that as an art practitioner today, you work collaboratively as well as independently around transdisciplinary and collective art practices. So this is something that we really emphasize on, um, that you don't just stay in the studio, but you go out, you, you make connections, you engage communities, and different parts of society in order to augment and strengthen your practice. The students uh, or applicants such as yourselves, if you are successful and you come on the program, uh, the studio environment is something that we really, really uh, emphasize on and it supports your creative experimentations across varied techniques that are essential to a fine art practice. And this you know, doesn't just cover the usual painting, uh, drawing or sculpture and ceramics, but we want you to really push the potential of your mediums to reframe and help us understand again what it means to be a, an art practitioner today. 
And of course, I think because we are NAFA and a big part of what we do is informed by the cultural research, distinctively informed by the Nanyang spirit, which is the idea of adventure, exploration and resilience. There are four distinctive features here that I would like to cover today about our course, that it is really, uh, again, practice-led and industry-focused. We want to develop relevant uh, fine art approaches, uh, knowledge, methodologies, techniques, and skills that are very much informed by what the industry uh, is looking at, what we can project and speculate for the art ecosystem as well. A big part of it is interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary learning. So it helps us to integrate ideas and skills into original and cohesive responses. As mentioned, the Nanyang spirit and the Southeast Asian dimension is heavily embedded within the course curriculum. So looking at artists from the region, their practices and how that informs and contributes to artistic and cultural research around the region. Uh, a big thing that we're emphasizing on is the idea of extended learning and discursive knowledge. We hope for everyone who joins the program uh, to be a self-initiated and independent learner, that you think about your learning as distinct, uh, distinctly informed by your portfolio and where you want to go in future. Um, so we have uh, fine art ateliers that really expand your understanding of art practices as well as a student-led platform, which will grow and develop as you enter the debut program, titled The Living Archive of Contemporary Southeast Asian Art. The mode of study is full-time, and it's divided over three stages over three academic years. Each stage consists of 28 teaching weeks and averages about 42 to 44 hours per week, which includes both teaching hours as well as independent study. Um, you will attend tutorials, seminars, lectures, uh, workshops conducted by perhaps artists and residents, visiting lecturers, speakers, uh, as well as live projects which will develop your practice and to think about the discourses that surround that. So just to help you visualize uh, what you will undergo when you go attend the course, uh, if you are an existing diploma student, uh, with NAFA, uh, this is what you can expect. Uh, within the diploma program, a big part of what you do is to develop artistic and professional interests. Whereas when you move into a degree program, it's really to develop strategies to further expand your inquiries, to reach out to collaborators, uh, like-minded peers, individuals who have shared re research interests and diverse key stakeholders. So as you can see from this map here, we move from first, second, third year, moving from studio exploration, critical reading and writing, uh, internship for those who are currently at NAFA would be familiar with this, thinking about your professional practice and your final studio project before you join us in your second year, in the second year of the degree course and thinking about your practice in larger terms. So thinking about collaborative and collective practices as well as an international engagement with the region as well as with uh, colleagues from the UAL. And then this will be a culmination of your practice uh, in the third year. So essentially, if you are a NAFA student uh, attending our diploma course, this would be a five-year journey from diploma to degree. If you are an A-level uh, graduate, or you have a diploma equivalent from another institution, or perhaps a diploma from another program with a relevant portfolio, you will join us in your first, in the first year, where really we will ground your understanding of fine art practices, uh, thinking about ideas of thinking through making um, before moving on into second year, uh, joining those that have already engaged with uh, these practices with the diploma program here, and then moving into the third year. So one thing we really pride ourselves on in the Fine Art Program is our ateliers, which are designed to complement our program. Essentially, these are in the areas of uh, critical studies in art practices, in uh, professional practice and critical thinking. And it's for you to partake on any atelier of your choice that will help build on a distinctive portfolio uh, to complement 
the transdisciplinary approaches of your learning and your creative interests. So a bit more about the different units that you'll experience. So in the three-year course, um, you will experience 10 different units, uh, four in year one, four in year two, and then two final units in year three. So with the first unit, uh, it really emphasizes on the course orientation, understanding NAFA's history and culture in context to the Southeast Asian region. And this you will embark to not just independent, but collaborative learning and take on workshops with uh, various stakeholders, such as uh, maybe um, the National Gallery, engaging with their resources, and of course, NAFA's Institute of Southeast Asian Art as well. Taken concurrently in this semester is fine art practices. You will engage in three key practices, which is the two dimensional mediums, which is painting, drawing, printmaking, uh, 3D mediums, ceramic sculpture, installation, uh, and then 4D practices, which is photography, performance, sound, and video art, which are basically time based mediums. And they will allow you to explore and, and, and really experiment the materials, processes, and techniques for each of these practices. In semester two of your first year, uh, you will engage with unit three, which is positions one, which allows you to articulate, evaluate, and think about your professional practice and how you situate what you do within an art ecosystem. So essentially from the studio looking out and how do you communicate your artistic aspirations. In unit four, thinking through making, uh, you will engage with studio practices, but also engaging with contextual and theoretical understanding of various movements, various ideas that inform artistic practice today. Uh, you will write as well uh, a research essay and then focus on an offsite show. So this is for the first year. In the second year, things start to get a lot more collaborative in nature. You will work closely with your peers in unit five, titled positions two. So how do you position and situate your practice and work within a wider and practical theoretical context? So you will identify shared research interests, uh, experiment with this collective and present a showcase or a presentation in, in Singapore or the region. Within unit six, uh, you will work collaboratively with uh, non-art institutional and community stakeholders thinking about how you can engage the community with a hypothetical project proposal as a group. In the second part of year two, I, I think this is the, the semester that most people are looking forward to um, because we will start to engage with the, our counterparts in UAL. So in unit seven, uh, really it's for you to position your practice in, and expand on that, but also think about the strategies to expand and activate your practice. Um, uh, we will talk more about this in the next slide. And then unit eight uh, is thinking about either embarking on um, a, a residency or an internship, really thinking about professional placements, or if you feel like an academic route uh, is something that you would consider, you will embark on a written publication. So this is a, a kind of overview of how we will conduct this semester. So of course, if in an ideal situation that if we get to travel uh, within unit seven, uh, students will take the first seven weeks in school in Singapore, uh, thinking about strategies to activate and expand their practice. And by week eight, they will start preparing for the UK trip. In week nine, you'll be on site with uh, your UAL counterparts really gathering and proposing different elements of both theoretical and practical inquiry uh, to create an on-site show or project. And this is obviously augmented by visits to the London galleries, museums, studios, etc. before coming back to Singapore. Uh, in unit eight, as I mentioned earlier, it's focused on two tracks. So you either embark on a written publication if you choose to pursue a more artistic and academic route or if you are more practical, you're more hands-on, then um, you will self-propose a residency or internship placement to embark on. 
owing the fact that we might not travel, uh, depending on the current pandemic and situation, uh, we will ensure that uh, that learning will not be compromised for this particular unit. Um, we will still work collaboratively and uh, with UAL to either do uh, blended formats, so whether it's through virtual tours, um, um, thinking about nomadic practices and how they can connect across the globe. Uh, and definitely lecturers from both NAFA and UAL will help to facilitate this learning. So by this time, this is your final year, uh, there will only be one unit per uh, semester. So really thinking about uh, a combination of your practice. So thinking, making and writing really informs your final year. Uh, where you think about your research and practice, uh, you will write uh, a thesis, uh, really engaging in critical inquiry of the ideas that inform and influence the things that you do. And then looking and working towards your graduating project. And then in this final semester, uh, you will position your work and engage with the publics. Thinking about how your graduating work can be site or audience specific, and considering the diversity of references that inform uh, critically the work that you do. This will also culminate in a degree, show, and publication that you will engage in as a full class. So I won't go into detail with the entry requirements because I believe my colleague Ruth will do that in a while. Um, but two things to note when you submit your application. Uh, one is the statement of intent which is about 500 words that outlines your interest of practice, your motivation for joining the course, and what you hope to achieve and produce in the course of study. Um, and then a portfolio, which consists five best examples of your creative works. So what we mean by five best examples, uh, we'll talk about this a bit more um, in the portfolio session later this afternoon. But briefly, it means that if you have five best works, ensure that you have three supporting images to support one particular body of work, right? That should demonstrate a kind of criticality, your creativity and reflection of your ideas and your view of the world. So some tips for your portfolio. Uh, we would like to see range, uh, that you are also uh, flexible, agile, adaptable as an art practitioner. Uh, if your works uh, have more of a design element or you've been engaging with other practices, it would also help you stand out and if you align your portfolio in that manner. We also appreciate process over perfection. Uh, sometimes the journey is as important as the final product. Uh, create a strong narrative of your portfolio. So there should be a very meaningful, impactful uh, storyline that informs the work that you do. Be decisive, don't put in uh, too many works. I think uh, curate and be selective about what you decide to include. Please explain to us your vision as well. Uh, tell us and contextualize what we're seeing and take control of what you want to present and how you are branding yourself as an applicant. Um, we hope in addition to your statement of intent, please also, I think, update your website, your online portfolios and include that uh, within um, the written documents as well. So just a quick overview of what we mean by uh, supporting images for a work. So uh, this was done by uh, one of our recent diploma students, and she had this body of work, this installation that was presented at the grad show. Uh, so if she just presented this at the work it, at, in her portfolio, we wouldn't get an immediate sense or an overview of what really the work is about. But if you support this with close-up images, well-taken images of the installation, different perspectives, and maybe some of the research, right? Whether you produce a publication or not, uh, sketches that will help us give a kind of holistic insight into the work that you produce. The same with this uh, student as well, this recent graduate, who created this sculpture made out of dust, right? So this is the main work and these are all the supporting processes and images uh, to show the final creation of the work. Again, we will go through more of these details uh, in the portfolio sessions. Uh, with the degree course fees, this is just an overview. 
of uh, how much it will cost for Singapore citizens, uh, PRs, as well as international students. Uh, the application period ends on 30th of April and the application fee will be waived till 31st of March. Some potential careers that you may look forward to, but not limited to, uh, you know, works, uh, work within the creative agencies, uh, curatorial and programming within art spaces, education, academia, uh, management. Uh, so not just being an artist, but also engaging interestingly with healthcare, for example, uh, in terms of art therapy, working with individuals who engage with art practices for health or to engage also in policy making or publishing and research. So as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, a big part of what we do emphasizes on individual students' aspirations and for you to identify where you would like to go, how you would like to take your fine art uh, skills, uh, these transferable fine art skills and the sensitivity to the world, your observation of the environment to make that particular to your portfolio. So I'm going to end off with this quote uh, by Tay Tong of the Director of Sector Development Visual Arts at the National Arts Council, but really just thinking overall what we hope for the course to agree to achieve, sorry, is that we hope for our graduates to be um, change makers, to initiate change, to be agents of wanting to contribute and shape the artistic landscape and environment. And because the world is evolving and changing so fast today, artists also need to keep up to be ready to visually, uh, socially engage with the world, to, to problem solve, to be resourceful, to provide new insights into what we do. So um, I've come to the end of my presentation. So if you have questions about the program, I believe we can address that during the Q&A se session, but I'll hand it over back to Ruth. Thank you. Okay, um, so I will be um, touching on the admissions requirements again. Okay, so um, for entry into year one, you need to have a minimum of um, A levels or a completed a year 12 of your high school or um, uh, it could also be uh, IB, International Baccalaureate, or even local poly diploma, if your diploma is not relevant to the course. For entry into year two, you will need a relevant diploma from NAFA or a recognized institution. And we will need to look at your transcripts um, to see that, uh, to be able to map your diploma modules to our diploma modules, if let's say it is not from NAFA. Okay, and so for English, if uh, English is not your primary media of instruction throughout your school education, you will need to provide IELTS 6 or above with at least 5.5 in the various components. Okay, so if let's say you study in Singapore, um, from primary school all the way through to diploma, uh, the English requirement will be waived. But if let's say um, you studied um, perhaps in China or Indonesia and uh, English was not your medium of instruction uh, during your education, you will need to provide an IELTS 6.0, uh, even, even if you have completed a diploma in Singapore. Uh, so just to mention again, which uh, Kimberly has shared earlier on, that for the portfolio, you would need to submit uh, five best examples of your creative works. And these works should be supported by up to three visuals of development works. And you will also need to write a statement of intent of, of about 500 words that outlines your interests or practice uh, in relation to the work that you aim to produce during your course of study. So here are some key dates for this uh, 2021 intake. 
So after uh, you have submitted an application and your portfolio, we will schedule you for an interview. This will happen um, between March to May. And your application outcome will be released four to six weeks after the interview. The orientation for this intake will start on 2nd August and the course commencement will be one week later on 10 August. And to share a view on the course fees for fine art, um, it will be 8,600 for Singaporeans. Uh, this is actually uh, with tuition grant, which is a subsidy from the government already. For PR, it will be $12,050. And for international students, uh, it will be 27000 Other fees will include uh, administrative fee, uh, fee protection fee, as well as hospitalization insurance fee are payable to NAFA. So for administrative fee is $100 per year. Fee protection fee is $300 per course and hospitalization fee is $60 per year. So um, like I've mentioned earlier on, the course fees are actually subsidized already. So if you are a Singapore citizen, or PR and has not enrolled into a local uh, degree program for NUS or NTU, you will be entitled the subsidized course fees. Internationals um, will not be eligible for tuition grant, so your fees are not um, subsidized by the government. And we have loyalty rebate for our NAFA diploma graduates who are paying full fees. So you can be an international student or someone who has completed a degree from NUS or NQ before and you will need to pay full fees, which is a non-subsidized fees. This will be uh, 1,500 per year for two years. If let's say you gain direct entry into uh, year two. And this is applicable for applicants who have graduated from um, 2018, AY 2018 or 19 onwards, okay. And for those of you who are eligible for the tuition grant, uh, mainly Singaporeans and PR, you are also able to use these additional financial schemes to help fund your course fees. This includes your post-secondary education account, also known as PSEA. Uh, you may use um, the CPF education loan scheme where you may use um, your parents' CPF or your own CPF account to subsidize uh, part of your course fees. And for the Malays, you may also apply to the Mandaki tertiary tuition fee scheme. We also have bond free scholarships for um, that is from NAFA and you may uh, visit this link for more information on scholarships, nafa.edu.sg slash scholarships, or you can also scan this QR code. Application for the degree course is already open and application fee will be waived until 31st of March. So do submit an application uh, to enjoy this fee waiver. Um, otherwise, um, the degree application will end 30th of April. And to apply, uh, you may scan this QR code or visit this link. Um, I will get my colleague to also share this link in the chat. <clears throat> 